touching you, touching you on a wonderful uh, Monday evening. We are Galaxy Radio. As I said, we have in the house, we have uh, Brother Matthew in the house with us. And we have Brother Kim. You know, I said, welcome, welcome Brother Matthew to Galaxy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, uh, hello to all the listeners and thank you for bringing me onto your program. It's great being here. Rise up and rise up to Brother Ken. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us onto the, your program. And I want to pick up Galaxy Radio and all its supporters. You know what? We love you. And keep up, keep on supporting the good man and the good work. <laughs> give thanks, give thanks. You know, yes, Brother Matthew. Mm. Yes. Mm. Gambia, the Gambia vibes. Yes. The Gambia you know, vibes. You know, <laughs> Glad to see what you're doing down there in, Thank you. in, in the Gambia. If you can just introduce yourself fully to the listener and just tell them about um, your What project. I'm doing and who yes, I am. I. Well, I don't think I'm any different to anybody who's listening at the moment, actually, mm -hmm. because um, I've been in this country from the early 60s. Um, originally, I came from Grenada. Mm -hmm. uh, my family came from Grenada. Um, We've lived through all the trials and tribulations of the last 20, 30 years in this country. Um, luckily, you know, God always helps me for some reason. Mm -hmm. My mother says I'm a creator, so anything I do, I try and create, and try and make it work kind of a situation. But um, a few years back in 2005, um, I needed a holiday. I was working too much. Mm -hmm. So my partner at the time said... Um, Oh, you need to have a break, you need to have a break. You know, da, da, da. I said, all right, all right, all right. Just find somewhere, somewhere in Africa. It must be, not Tunisia, <laughs> you know, it has to be Africa, you know. So anyway, um, we found Gambia, and, you know, I kind of a half promised that I wouldn't look at properties or anything like that. So I had a friend at the time who was um, doing a project, giving out stuff in, for schools and fundraising and Hearts to Africa. Oh, yes. Hearts yes. to Africa, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So for the, first, for the first week or so, I went around with them giving out books and um, other materials to schools, which was great because I'm seeing now for first hand mm -hmm. how the villages are, who the people are, how things are. And it was nice. It was kind of rewarding. I like Gambia because it reminded me of the Caribbean. You know, insofar as it's not too big, it's not Nigeria, it's not Senegal, it's not any of those places. <laughs> you know, it was it was almost like going back to the countryside. Mm. You know, I like that. But I I also saw lots of other resemblance in terms of people selling on the beach and the way they having to walk that hot sand every day with their wares, trying to sell to tourists that you know weren't paying them any mind and so on. So it kind of, uh, I felt it. I mm. felt, I felt the country. I felt the struggle that the people were having. Anyway, the second week, <laughs> I thought, let me have a look and see what properties are around. <laughs> so um, I, I kind of uh, went around for a few days, and someone local told me about this resort that was actually in the centre of everything, but it had been closed for a few years. This resort was. Um, a resort called Sambu's. Mm -hmm. It was um, it was started by a, an African man some time ago, and I think in the first recession back in the 80s, 90s, he lost it, mm -hmm. and it was bought by an Indian man for his son because it was a beautiful place, and he said that he, you know he's buying it for his son, but his health deteriorated, mm -hmm. so um, he put it up for sale. And it was just happened to be at the time when I was there, so oh, I thought. Oh, the work. So I, d I just fell in love with it. The place was beautiful, you know. You walk off the main road. It's on a corner, so mm. on one one side of it you've got a road going down to the beach, and on the other side you've got the main road. Mm. So um, you walk off the main road. You walk through the gates. These big pine trees and mango trees mm. and pathways mm. and everything just seemed just totally tranquil. Oh, this is fantastic mm. and for the price I, I bought it for a reasonable amount mm. of money but at the same time I, I felt that the things that I wanted to do I couldn't do those things in the Caribbean as much as I loved the Caribbean I knew that I wouldn't be able to do the type of things I wanted to do in the Caribbean mm. and this gave me an opportunity to do it you know it's a winter holiday destination you know people go there during the off season 
Um, it's just, the climate is exactly the same as the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. We have the same rainy season. We have the same time zone. We have the mm -hmm. same everything. So you know, it wasn't it wasn't difficult to like it. And um, so I bought it. I bought it the second week I was there. And um, the barrister who who did the transaction, he came to London, and um, we had never met. We'd only spoken on the mm -hmm. phone. When he came to London, we met in a hotel in Edgeway Road, and I could see him coming through the door, and I was sitting in the, re in the reception bar waiting. He walked past me, he looked around, he's walking up and down, looking <laughs> around. <laughs> so, so I stopped him and I said, Sheriff, you looking for me? <laughs> so he says, you, you couldn't believe that he was a black person. Because oh. he says, these things don't happen. He says, yes. these, these things only happen with white people. I says, well, you know, why? <laughs> he says, that's how it's always been. He's never, ever had a transaction that size with a black mm -hmm. person. So I said, no, hey, come on. You know, we're living in the 21st century. And <laughs> it's time for us to do the things we want to do. And that's, how it's, that's, that's how it came about. That's basically how it came about. And it's um, the ideas then that you're putting in it, you know? Well, one of the things that, you know, that kind of a struck me when I went to Gambia is that first of all most of the most of the things in Gambia are owned by either Indians or Lebanese or people like that and you know they they don't see Africa like how I see Africa mm. you know I you, you go into a hotel room in Africa you want to feel like you're in Africa you don't want to feel like you're in <laughs> Spain or <laughs> you're on the Riviera or you're in London mm. you know so and the project that I've, I've undertaken is a big project because yeah. it's a large, very large resort, you know. Um, and, you know, I'm like you. I'm like anybody in London. I'm just getting by. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I have some property here, and so from some of the income from the property, I managed to filter some of it into doing the project over there. But I had to think of a way of doing it where I didn't have to spend a vast amount of money on concrete and steel and mm. do it in that kind of a way. So I searched in it and searched in it and I came up with um with um doing it with with compressed earth blocks or dorby blocks. Mm -hmm. Now these these blocks are made from waste from the roads, from the quarries and so on. Um the waste combined it's like cooking a soup. Yeah. You know, if you're cooking a broth, you're cooking a broth. If you're cooking a chicken soup, it's a chicken soup. Mm -hmm. If you're making blocks, you're making blocks. Mm -hmm. And the ingredients that go into that soup, we produce beautiful quality yeah, blocks. Yeah, I've seen them. I've seen them. Beautiful mm -hmm. quality blocks. And they remind me, I suppose, of bricks that you see on English buildings. Mm -hmm. One, it's for me, it became much more economical to do it like that. So what I did is that I found a machine that I was happy with. I got it from India. I went to India. Yeah, was <laughs> I did a course. <laughs> I did a course in India on how to make the blocks and also how to build, mm. how to build using it. So now we build vaulted ceilings. We do, we, we do domes. Yeah, I've just done my first big dome. <laughs> my first big dome. I mean, when I was on the course, I made a very small dome, but the theory on making domes and making arches is fairly consistent. It's, mm -hmm. They've been doing it from time and, you know, they've been doing it from mm -hmm. time, you know. The Egyptians did it, many other people did it with similar materials. Even the English did it, mm -hmm. you know, using similar materials. But, you know, in this modern age, they try and convince you, unless you're buying a bag of cement and you're doing this and you're doing that, you can't be doing it. You can be doing it. There are lots of different ways to build. But at the same time, we build in a very, very constructive way. It's not, we're not just building it from materials that's going to be gone we and go wasting go tomorrow. No, 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 no. We, we, we work properly. We've just finished, on the beach road, we've just finished nine shops. Um, nine nice-looking shops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm into the nice-looking. <laughs> yeah, but naturally nice-looking. Not nice-looking because it's all glitzy. I believe in mixing it a little bit so it's a little bit of bling but a lot of natural and you put it all together and then you got you get get you know you get good results mm. so we finished the nine shops and we've um we've we've got three left to rent mm. so that's helped us in terms of some income um we've we're on the inside now 
Um, we finished the dome that you saw. Mm -hmm. We just finished that earlier on in the year. Let me tell you about building that dome. That dome was built by me and four other people. Now, these people never knew what a dome looked like, mm -hmm. more or less, to, to build one. And I always start off with a drawing on the wall yeah. and give them an idea <coughs> of where we're going, from the foundations to the first arch to the circle to the first bricks that start making the dome right up to the last. In the last part of that dome, from the time we finished, I did the first arch, mm -hmm. the second arch, the third arch. They did the other arch. There must be maybe about 15 arches mm -hmm. going right around. Yeah. They made those other arches themselves, <laughs> having seen how yeah. I've done mm -hmm. it and we did it together. Yeah. When we got to the dome itself, I started the dome so that we can get the right angle, so that it goes up in the right projection. We did, I did maybe the first meter and a half, and then I left the country. Mm -hmm. They built the rest themselves. Yeah. Two people, one laborer mm -hmm. and one builder, one masoner. Mm -hmm. They took their time, it took a few months, but they did it themselves. Mm. And that's how it's been with me working there. In, in the early days, I, I used to have contractors who would um, oh, waste time, really, waste of time. You know, contractors who would come in, half of what they did you had to undo when you came yeah, back yeah, and so yeah. on. So sm little by little, I broke it all down to a very small team. Mm -hmm. Now I have a very small team working there year round. And I start work with them and we work through for a few months or a few weeks while I'm in the country. Yeah. Then I leave them to it. I come back towards the end of the work. We work through the end of that and we start new work. And it's been working successfully that way for the last few years now. So thank God. It's Do what I see, you know, mm. is some good work, you know. And the part that really moved me more is that in theater. Oh, the theater, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, the place, the place, I don't want to... Hey, Africa's hard work. Don't, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong. It's mm -hmm. not easy. You know, Africa's not easy as people might think it is. But it's very rewarding. Yeah. It's very rewarding. You wake up in the morning and you have an idea. And by the end of the week, you've created something that was just in your head a few days ago. So that part of it is very rewarding. But what I don't, I, I don't want to run a resort. Yeah. Because running a resort is hard work, and I don't think I'm up for the hard work, you know. <laughs> I'm up for hard work, but yeah, not that kind of hard work. Yeah, yeah. You know, the people management and all the rest of it that it takes to run a resort, I'm not sure I'll do that. So most of what I'm building, some of it is going to be sold, some of it is timeshare, some of it is just rent. Yeah. Just in a straightforward, normal way. So we've got, we're creating a gated living in one side of it, and it's such a big place. The front end of it, where the dome is, yeah. we're, we're creating a restaurant and a theater and a venue. Huh. A venue. Really? A venue where we can start bringing plays. We can start bringing shows. We can start bringing theater. We can start bringing drama. We can start bringing dance. And we can start get creating a fusion. Mm -hmm. So we have a very nice stage which we set up with the changing facilities and all the rest of it. We have a nice restaurant. Capacity, maybe about 2,500 people. We want to get that fusion, mixing soca music and zouk music and, and African mm. music and Ghanaian music and Korea. everything that we know as well as Caribbean people. That's right, that we know together with their music yes. because so much of it is so close. And the drama and the dance, I mean, talking about it just is, just makes me want to just finish things quick, quick, quick. <laughs> but we're trying to do it correct. We, we want to have proper production, we have proper lights, proper shows, proper management. And as we're going along, we'll bring people in, just as we brought people in to learn how to use the blocks and to build. We'll also bring people in to stage manage, to production, to do all the things that are necessary so that I can sit back, put my foot up, and enjoy the show <laughs> without, without the drama. You know, that's, that's my ambition. Hey, go on, girl. Beat it out. Beat it out. Beat it out. Ken was there. Mm. Oh, yeah. Was that your, your first time in Africa? My first time in West Africa. Ah, uh, what an experience. You know, I, I can just say this. I went out as a West Indian <laughs> and I came back an African.